Wow. And then it will work like this all the way to 17 meters. And then for 40, we have to add a longer counterpoise. I've got a, uh, about 40 feet we add to that. Okay. And you just run the counterpoise out anywhere. And it goes right here with... And you, you take this one off also? You put them both on. Oh, okay. You can just put the, uh, another nut on here or take that nut off and put it on. Okay. And I say what it is is 135 inches. And then the counterpoise is 135, which makes it 5 eighths over 5 eighths. This is the phasing line for 6 meters. This is actually about 34 inches. And that's because there's quite a bit of capacitance right in here. And that's for this is fairly only 35 inches. If this capacitance was a lot less, this might be 50 inches long to get it to come in. You can measure right here between the 5 eighths over 5 eighths, and you should end up with a 50 ohms um, you know, on 6 meters. And then for all the other bands, yes, the area is going to be you know, 3 to 1, 4 to 1, but that's nothing. The efficiency of the antenna is still going to be very, very good. The only place that efficiency is going to hurt is when you go all the way to 40 meters and have to lay most of some of the current on the ground. But still, this, this part of it is going to radiate very efficiently. So, you know, maybe you'll lose three or four dBs okay. from a real dipole. Okay. Uh, but on six meters, it should have some gain. Okay. Maybe uh, five dBs. Okay. On the other bands, 10, 12, 15, 17. It's basically a vertical wood counterpoint. So it's unity, unity gain on all those okay. bands. But that's it. Okay. You know, and uh, so it's, you see uh, how fast it is to put together. Put yeah. Out. Same thing to take apart and put away. Right, right. Uh, just nothing to it. So that was the whole idea. Right, exactly. Of designing this antenna. This is a Christmas tree stand. They make various sizes. This is the 28 inch one, they make a 32 and a 36. So this is the minimum size you want to have to hold something like this up. Okay. If, it, if the wind gets extremely windy, then you might want something uh, yeah. bigger. Right. But for here in Southern California, most of the time we don't have that terrible amount of wind and you're just portable anyway for right. you know, whatever the vacation time is that you're out on the hill. Or right. So just explain once more, just so we can put it firmly in our minds. Okay. What we have here, is 135 inches, which means it's a 5 inch wave on 6 meters. Then we have a counterpoise that's also 135 inches. We come to the center, and these things have to be 5 eighths over 5 eighths, which means there's a quarter wavelength we have to hide electrically. Generally speaking, that's about 50 inches, and it should be wide spaced. Otherwise, the, if you put these coils next to each other, there'll be so much capacitance, it'll start resonating, and the phase won't be right okay. at all. So you want to wide space it. It's going to be between 30 and 50 inches of wire, depending on the amount of capacitance that's created by these connections right here. So this is actually uh, fitted together. The pipe is inside. This is like a little capacitor right okay. in this joint. And this has so much capacitance, in fact, because this is actually from the um, AR6. The Christoph AR6 is what I took this out of. Okay. So it ended up being about 34 inches of actual wire. And the original AR6 capacitor coax has been unscrewed and thrown away. We don't okay. want, want to minimize the capacitance that All we've right. got just so we get some inductance here. Right. And so that creates a 5 8 over 5 8. On other bands, it just sees this as an inductor and a long whip. Okay. So to get that closer to 50 ohms, we add counterpoises on here mm -hmm. for whatever band we want to s slow it down to. Okay. But by putting a the actual... 100 and, you know, 135 inches here, this counterpoise is good enough all the way down to 17 meters. Okay. And then for other bands, we want another one. In this case, I've got about 40 feet of wire on here. I actually have to measure it. I don't remember what this is exactly. Okay. But it's not that critical. You just got to have it out there so you can make this go into, you know, close to resonance here. Okay. Is, is what we want. So an antenna tuner would be... Are you going to use an antenna yep. tuner on all the bands yep. except probably six? Okay. All right. 
you know. Perfect, I got still, one. But still, the SWR should be three to one, you know, okay. go up to four, down to two on okay. all the other bands. Can you do 200 watts on this engine or just 100? You can run a kilowatt on it. Oh, wow, okay. <laughs> yeah, to, there's nothing here that can't stand the current or the voltage okay. or a full right. limit. Okay. Uh, and, uh, and the reason we don't put a lot of counterpoises out is we just want to get the efficiency up. We're not worried about getting a perfect match. Okay. You know, because here it gets portable, you know, yeah. bring it on in with a matchbox, yeah. doesn't help the efficiency. Yeah. And then generally speaking, I would splay these out away from the coax. They say the coax run is that way. Mm -hmm. I would display these out away from the coax run, okay. away from each other. Okay. Right. And that's it. You mean take it apart so they can okay, see how, yeah. how it went together. So it just sticks on this PVC. The PVC itself has some dowel wood in it to stiffen it. And then the Christmas tree stand. These are hard to come by except around Christmas time. Mm -hmm, yeah. You can find them quite, uh, quite easily almost, you know, Home Depot, Lowe's, all these big dealers do carry them in Christmas mm -hmm. time season. And you just put it in there and put it in here and boom, we'll, your antenna's out. Wow. Oh, that's awesome. Thank you so and, much. You know, around here in Southern California, we don't have like trees out, out in the desert and up in the mountains that much mm -hmm. that we can even really utilize. Right. So to have something that you'd be in a park and have, you know, nobody can complain about you pulling this out and yeah. setting it up yeah. at one point. Yeah. Because you're not really attaching to anything. Yeah. But yet, uh, the efficiency should be good and you should be able to work at DX much better than, say, one of these current loops. Mm -hmm. You know, the current loops work, but they really aren't very good at putting energy where you want it. Okay. On the horizon, this would be much, much better. All right. Uh, so, any questions? I think that's it. How far do you want to be away from these? Uh, you know, here again, if you're running 100 watts, a few feet is fine. If kilowatt, maybe 10 or 20 feet away. Okay. You know, it's not, it's not terribly critical. All right. Uh, you know, on, on the HF bands. It has very little heat effect on the human body or anything. Okay. Uh, so. All right. Thank you so much, Paul. That's awesome. That's so cool. <laughs> Alrighty. That is awesome. Okay. That's cool. And that's Will's creation. That's right. AA60D. What, what are we going to call it? The, the YYL antenna? <laughs> YYL portable? <laughs> That's pretty cool. All right. Thank you so much, Will. Okay.